Hi guys, welcome back to A Better You Podcast. I am your host, Fernando Ramirez, and I'm so happy to have you here for another episode. I hope you guys are all doing well, and I am so excited for today's episode because it is a continuation from the previous episode, which was the Glow Up episode one for Back to School. Obviously, this doesn't have to be exactly for Back to School or Back to Work, but it's just for September in general because I know that it's a time when a lot of people are going back into their next semester. Or for myself, I feel like it's kind of a time where I want to reel it back in. Summer is ending, fall is starting. It's just a switch in energy. So in the last glow up episode that we saw, it was all on external things about ourselves. It was all about the physical aspects of us, how we can improve our makeup, our hair, our body hygiene, your overall self care routine, etc. I know I feel like especially on YouTube or influencers, we have to say that like all this external stuff shouldn't matter and it's all from within. But I'm also a girl and I was also a teen and I was also in school and I know how fun it is to want to accessorize or beautify and just kind of like make yourself feel good externally. But like everyone else, I completely agree that it does not matter how much you do to the outside of yourself, how much self care you do, if you do not work on your insides, literally all of it is pointless. I think the way that someone takes care of themselves internally and all the stuff that they do to maintain their energy levels, their mood, their stress, what they put into their bodies, how they treat their bodies, how they treat their brains and the things that they say to themselves every day is truly what makes the difference and makes them shine and glow from within. When you have this inner spark inside of you and you're truly working on yourself every single day, raising your vibrations and overall just making yourself ooze good energy, whether you are actively meaning to or not just by doing all these things that's what happens and those are the people that glow the most those are the people that walk into a room and you cannot help but stare and keep your eyes on them because they are so radiating and they demand your attention when they walk in the room and if all of that describes what you want to be and what you want to be embodying going into this next september and season or year then keep watching because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Before we continue on into this episode, if you haven't already subscribed to the A Better You podcast YouTube channel, make sure you do so. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other streaming platform, make sure you rate this podcast a five star, make sure you give it a review and recommend it to a friend if you think that this could serve them or they need to hear a little something. Last one is make sure to follow the at A Better You Instagram account because I'm so active on there. I'm always posting I'm always interacting with you guys and I'm there for you I'm like your I'm like your sister <laughs> so if you want to if you want to follow up with anything all the socials are out of better you but anyways before we go into it let me just let me just take a minute to say hi to my besties because in the last episode I didn't really give you a, a proper catch up and as my best friend I feel like I need to do that for you guys and I want to hear it back as well so guys how are you doing I hope you're doing well I hope that the end of summer is treating you great and that if you haven't done every single thing on your bucket list, you still do a little bit more because I think we got like a few more weeks before we close the chapter of another summer. And for me, I'm going to my friend's cabin this weekend and I'm so excited. I'm gonna be living out my end of summer fantasies and just enjoying the moment and being present and being grateful and honestly just absorbing the last bit of sun as much as I can because the minute we go back into fall, it's grind time, it's cozy time, it's, Oh my god, I actually just can't even fathom the fact that it's fall because mentally I'm still in January and I don't know how it's been nine months. I don't know how. My challenge to you is that before August finishes, do a few more things on your summer bucket list and make the last few weeks count because it's all we have and at least if you can fit in so many fun jam-packed activities in the last few weeks, that'll really make or break your summer and when you go back to school, this is if you go back to school in September, you'll have a few more stories, a few more insights, a few more experiences to share about. And I think I speak on behalf of everybody. It is the most uncomfortable experience when someone asks you, oh my God, how was your summer? What did you do? And then you realize you haven't really done much. That is not the vibe that we're going for. So we gotta make sure we're doing fun stuff, reading fun stuff, learning fun stuff so that we, first of all, feed our brains. And second of all, have a lot to share when we come back. And also, if you've already started school, I hope that the beginning of school is going great for you. And I hope that these tips help you out and keep you on track for the rest of the year because some of these things I feel like they're kind of a given I feel like some of these things are kind of obvious but 
I don't know about you guys, but I like hearing it again. I like refreshing my mind on these things, and I like it when someone puts them in a easily digestible form that I can just sit back and listen to. But also, if you don't know about these things, you know, hopefully you learn something new and take one of these tips or one of these suggestions with you and use it to become the best version of yourself and make this year one that is truly different. I know we say that every year, but truly it's a work in progress. And if you would have asked me five years ago if I was on the same self-development, self-growth path as I am now, I there, there's no chance I just wouldn't have been so every year we grow we get better speaking of our glow up We're gonna talk about fitness. We're gonna talk about hydration We're gonna talk about eating healthy quality sleep managing stress Improving your mood and overall the mindset that you need to have working on all of these things Intertwine with each other and like you need one to make the other one thrive if that makes sense And once all of these are thriving or most of these things like you're taking care of your body your brain your health whatever then Going to school and learning is going to be so much easier for you I think there is nothing worse than trying to focus and learn when like your sleep is off when you feel Distracted by negativity insecurities when you're becoming a phone zombie and you literally can't focus or you don't have like a proper Plan to manage your stress. It can kind of consume you It goes from just like swimming in the deep end to you are drowning You cannot focus you cannot do your work You cannot hand assignments in on time because everything is falling apart. So actively checking in on all these things and making sure that you're not falling behind or anything will help everything else. I know for myself, I'm not in school, but in terms of my YouTube and my job and like all the things that I have to do because I don't have a team working for me right now, I do everything on my own in terms of editing, podcast, producing, sponsorships, all that kind of stuff. There is absolutely no way that I could do all that stuff if I'm not prioritizing my fitness or even taking care of my stress, seeing my friends often enough, like everything just really truly matters when you're trying to show up as your best self. Let's start with number one, which is our fitness. I know that it's really common for people to go into their fitness journey because they want to look better, lose weight, they want to, I don't know, appeal to the beauty standard. Like there's all these physical reasons for why you would want to start your fitness journey. But even if you are like naturally skinny, being fit and prioritizing physical activity is just going to help you so much and your mental health. I didn't realize how much being active was vital to me until I quit gymnastics and cheer and I think the reason for this was like I was in those competitive sports for so much of my life that it just became the standard it was truly my baseline levels of fitness and when I quit that and then I stopped working out oh my god those were some of the lowest points in my life like I didn't realize the correlation between that but when you are not moving your body it's like you have these little endorphins that are not being produced are not being released you're just kind of feeling stagnant so even if you are naturally fit or you're not trying to lose weight or tone up or get stronger, being actively fit and having an active lifestyle is just going to help your mental health in so many ways. So I wanted to talk about some ways that I think you can incorporate fitness into your busy schedule, whether you're at school or you're at work. My first suggestion to you is to prioritize walking everywhere. If you live in a city or you live on a campus, this is especially easy for you because you probably don't have to use your car anyways and you can just walk everywhere you go. You can put your earphones on, you can put a cute little workout set on, or you can just have your cute little outfit for the day and romanticize the process of getting those steps in. I know it's a huge thing to reach 10,000 steps a day and if you can do that, you're winning. You probably don't even really need like a super huge workout plan even because walking is so good for you. And especially if you have like an Apple watch or something to track your steps, again, you're winning, it's easy, just do it. I think walking is like one of the best workouts that you can do. And again, it's so easy to romanticize, especially now that everyone's into this whole hot girl walk movement. It's like so fun and trendy and you can do it with your friends. I know I just said that walking is trendy and that's really cringe, but honestly it is like tell me why I Was not on hot girl walks like a few years ago And now that hot girl walks became a thing suddenly I feel like I need to go on one I personally don't walk in the mornings, but I know that that's also a huge mood booster for a lot of people So if you can wake up and the first thing you do is go outside that is great I also think that it's really great for your like circadian rhythm I could be saying this so wrong but like for your brain to see light and to see humans first thing in the morning when you wake up because it really just like catapults you into the daytime. Another thing that is very cute that I saw someone on TikTok say was that whenever she goes 
goes on a walk, there is bound to be something to make her smile. Whether that be an old couple on a bench reading their newspaper, or you see a little kid playing and laughing, or you see a person that is just so happy, they're like smiling and have a pip in their step as they walk. Whatever it is, you're bound to see something that's gonna make you smile. The next thing that I would suggest to you, if you actually want to get into a workout routine, get in shape, and you actually wanna start a fitness journey and not just like walking around every day, I would highly recommend figuring out where your starting point is and making goals for yourself so that you have kind of a goal that you want to reach or something motivating you because sometimes working out just to work out is like it's not motivating enough for me. I need to find a goal that's like, I wanna be able to do this workout class and not cry and die and want to leave. I wanna be able to do my 12, 3.30 and not feel like I'm having a heart attack by the end of it. I wanna be able to go on a 10K run. I wanna be able to have a six pack. I wanna grow my bum and just have a great figure. Like having a goal in mind is so much easier and so much more motivating for myself. And once you have this goal, and also again, it can just be that you just wanna stay active for your overall well being. It doesn't need to be something super tangible I highly recommend scheduling your workouts and finding a schedule that you can try your best to stay accountable for whether that be three days a week two days a week once a week treat your workouts as if they were important appointments that you cannot miss because of this reason that is why I like workout classes because I know that I made a commitment I paid for that class and if I don't go I will literally get charged that's what also motivates me and makes it feel like it's an appointment I know that I cannot be late and I'm so much more inclined to going rather than if it's just like oh I'm gonna work out at the gym after then it's like I don't even have to go if I don't want to go so that is why making it like an appointment makes you go so much more consistently you can even schedule them into your calendar to ensure that you will allocate time for that a tip for you if you are in school or you're at work and you say that you're just so busy and you don't have time for it is wake up a little bit earlier if you want to go in the mornings or even bring your workout clothes with you so that you can change into them right when you're done your school and go straight to the gym I know for myself if I don't bring my work out clothes with me I will just like go home sit on the couch and be like yeah it's not happening but if it's already with me I'm like girl you have no excuses you have to go and also signing up to a gym or having a gym that has a facility like a shower is also so fun because you can go to the gym have your shower get ready for the day and then go to school I personally have a membership at Equinox which is really expensive I know you don't need that but I know that they have like a discount I think for people that work like corporate jobs or if you just go to Equinox that place is beautiful I like literally want to go just so that I can shower do the sauna steam and then get ready there so if you can fit that into your schedule before you go to school that's also iconic also if you're like in high school sign up for a sport because that's gonna keep you fit without even trying whether that be volleyball or cheerleading or whatever that'll keep you fit and also if you are already in a sport like competitive something while you're in high school honestly stay in it at least until you graduate because that's what kept me fit and busy and just like honestly it kept my mind on something throughout my entire adolescent years. The other thing that I suggest is to choose efficient workouts. If you're super busy and you don't have time to spend like three hours at the gym, pick something like a HIIT workout or even like a hot yoga rather than regular yoga or running on the treadmill, like something that's more efficient. Even a circuit workout, like those are so freaking hard. They make you have a greater workout in a shorter amount of time and they make you sweat so much. And sweating, honestly underrated. Nobody likes to sweat when they're not trying to, but when you are trying to, it's great because you're like exuding liquid from your body. Okay, that's sounded horrible but I, I just feel like getting a good sweat in really makes me feel good and it feels like I'm like detoxing my body the last two tips I have for you is to find accountability so work out with a friend so that you guys can keep each other accountable and also just to incorporate it more into your regular routine so like taking the stairs if possible taking the elevator if possible being on your fitness grind will help you glow from within and will keep your happy brain in check going off of the fitness grind one important thing that is actually maybe the most vital to us humans is having proper hydration and drinking a lot of water. We all know that this has so many health benefits. Literally drinking water will help you glow from within. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say this, okay, I'm sorry. But to those people that flex that they don't drink water, which was once me, I'm embarrassed and ashamed to say that. At one point I was like, 
I don't even drink water. Like all I drink is pop. All I drink is whatever. I definitely don't drink one cup of water a day. It's not a flex guys. Let's stop saying it because if you don't drink water, it says first of all so much about the way that your body is feeling right now. It's just not cute. We need water. We want to smell good. We want to be healthy. We want to be glowing. Not drinking water is literally telling everybody I probably don't smell that good. I probably don't have clean skin. I probably my organs are begging for help right now. Like it's, it's just not a vibe. Okay. Drinking enough water throughout the day is essential for maintaining energy whether that be at school when you're like stressed out you're working you're taking a test or you're working out and like you're trying to have enough energy for the workout and avoid dehydration or you want to avoid bloating I'm sorry, but I feel like people in high school, especially or like younger people than me are always asking me how they can eliminate bloating or whatever. Literally drinking water throughout the day is going to be your best friend. Dehydration also can lead to feelings of fatigue, which is the opposite of what we want when we're trying to push through the day. Drinking water before your meals also can contribute to a feeling of fullness and may control your appetite. So for me, I feel like that's also extremely helpful so that I'm not overeating when I'm like bored throughout the day. It also regulates your mood as dehydration can lead to mood swings and irritability. It also makes you more alert, feel more capable. It makes your skin look hydrated, plump, and healthy, and also kind of like fills in your fine lines, which is like, I think what we all want. It makes you more radiant. It makes you look more moisturized. It keeps your skin with its elasticity. Also, being dehydrated has effects on your cognitive function. So if you are trying to use that brain power, make sure it's having enough water. And yeah, overall, it's good for your nutrition. The next one is eating healthy. We know that what we put in our body really reflects on the outside. If you have a diet high in processed food, high in fatty foods, greasy foods, crunchy fried foods like you're probably not gonna be glowing and i don't know about you guys but sometimes i will be on instagram and i see this like model person or just this person in general and they are glowing they look so healthy energetic beautiful their body goals they just look so good and i'm like damn i wonder what they're doing turns out they're probably vegan they're probably vegetarian or they're probably have like really good healthy diet they don't eat too much processed food like it's always that like truly what you put into your body really reflects on the outside and honestly looking healthy is like the most attractive feature and healthy looks different on everybody so that's a really important thing to note but at the end of the day being healthy is attractive it makes you look youthful and beautiful and it makes you feel good. There's so many foods that are healthy for you, and although you can do the research and find what foods will make you glow, I feel like having an overall just nutritious, vibrant in color diet will help you get to whatever goals you wanna be. But one thing I will say is that if you are struggling with like dead hair, or you wanna have more glowy skin, or you want to help a certain aspect of your body, like maybe your liver, I would highly recommend looking up online and just seeing what nutrients and what vitamins you need, because everybody needs different things, and prioritizing the foods that are really going to benefit your like target areas is the ideal solution. I've looked up online for you guys some things that I want to mention in case you don't already know them already and you can kind of take these with you and incorporate them more into your diet. The first category of course is fruit and veggies. I love having berries. Berries are high in antioxidants and they also protect your skin from damage. So if you're looking for like a snack to take with you throughout the day, highly recommend blueberries. They're so good. You can put them in a yogurt parfait in the mornings. You can make acai bowls. You can freeze them. I also love frozen grapes. Just putting that one out there. The next thing is citrus fruits like oranges, lemons, and grapefruit. They are high in vitamin C, which supports collagen production for healthy skin, which means your skin is going to be glowing, youthful. We're ultimately trying to improve our collagen production. And then another really important one is leafy greens or greens in general. Spinach and kale are so good for you. They're packed with vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants to also support your skin health. Literally, my boyfriend will grab a handful of spinach and shove it in his mouth in the mornings. And although it's not my vibe, not my vibe to be eating like a little bunny. Um, you can grab a handful of spinach and put it in your smoothie and then you can't even taste it. Like guys, if you asked me in high school to eat a bunch of spinach, I would have said, hell no, that's so gross. I don't like eating greens. Like I was probably so annoying about it, but honestly, if you put it in a smoothie, you cannot taste it. You literally can't taste it. And like, you may look at a green smoothie and be like, this is so unappealing. Like it looks so healthy. It's probably bad. That's not true. I don't know who told you that that was true, but it's not true. Just because something is green does not mean it tastes bad. In fact, one, it looks cute. You look like you're taking care of yourself. You look like a healthy girl. But in reality, you could have like apples in there. You could have pineapple. You could have strawberries, whatever it is. You can make that smoothie taste good and adding that spinach will not make it taste any different. You can try it out for yourself. For myself, when I'm trying to get more 
spinach into my diet I'll put it into my eggs like having scrambled eggs with spinach or like I said putting it in smoothies Another way that I like to get in my vegetables is by making juices This is a little bit of an investment to get a juicer, but I highly recommend it I've talked about it in so many videos But having celery juice literally makes my skin glow from within and a school tip for you is that if you buy one You can make your juices on like a Sunday night and prep them for the week at least for Monday Tuesday and Wednesday You could do that first of all your juice is gonna be pre-made which is great second of all again looks cute I'm sorry that I say things look cute But literally things being aesthetic and looking cute motivates me in so many aspects like if I know that it's gonna look good I want to do it and you may think that that's a silly approach But if it works it works and I'm not gonna complain other foods that are great for you are healthy fats like avocado and nuts and seeds Literally, they're so good for you. So don't be scared of them just because it's got the word fats in them Like it's it's good for you They also contribute to moisturized skin and they provide essential fatty acids. I love me a good avocado toast and Nuts also you can add them into your smoothies and you can't even taste them and it adds a little bit of a crunch Other really healthy foods are omega-3 fatty acids, which are like fatty fish such as salmon or sardines We've also got protein sources like lean meats such as chicken and turkey and also beans lentils and chickpeas They're so good for you And also if you are on your gym grind and you are trying to build more muscle protein is essential for you And guys I can attest to this recently I have been on my gym grind and I have never eaten as much protein as I have now And I literally look better than when I was trying to be like literally a vegan I don't know why like last summer I hardly ate any meat and this summer I'm eating significantly more and I look better than I did last year so highly recommend that if you don't eat meat get a good protein powder and put it in your smoothies other things that are great for you are some whole grains like brown rice and quinoa dark chocolate that's a big one I love getting dark chocolate and snacking on that whenever I want something sweet that's healthy for me also probiotic rich foods such as like yogurt sauerkraut and like even kimchi those are so good for your gut health which really just changes your like stomach honestly like ever since healing my gut health I feel like I don't even bloat as often and I don't experience stomach pain and speaking of stomach pain if there is something that is bothering your stomach figure out what that is because you might have an intolerance to something and it's better to know about it before you continue doing it and damage something further one tip that I want to give to those that are in school or working and have a busy schedule is to try meal prepping this means like cooking a lot maybe at the beginning of the week or on the weekend and saving it up throughout the week so that you don't have to worry about what meals you're gonna have and then this way you can ensure that you're gonna have tasty good nutritious healthy meals that are better than just buying processed food last minute because you don't have more time and you're also going to know exactly everything that goes into them this can be veggies or meat i personally love cooking like so much chicken and then having that throughout the week so that i have enough protein because it is a little bit difficult to reach your protein goals especially if you're trying to get some gains in the gym the next thing that makes you glow which i think we all know this is quality sleep i honestly underestimate the power of having good sleep and it's like night and day and you don't even realize how bad it is when you're in a terrible sleep cycle but really you just have so much more energy so much more motivation to get stuff done in the day and you feel like you have a little fire lit under your bum whereas when you do not get good sleep basically a write-off day for me like I actually just can't function and my work just gets done so poorly having good sleep is not only essential for your energy levels and having optimal academic performance which is exactly what we want if we're talking about back to school but it also helps in your cell turnovers so you're genuinely going to look better and also you can actually gain muscle through your sleep so there's no point in working out so much if you're not getting good sleep some of the ways that you can fix your sleep schedule is by curating a night routine that you're actually excited about this means getting ready for bed having comfy sheets good pillows you can dim the lights knowing that this is the time to limit your screen usage and also reading that book that you've been wanting to read I love reading self-help books they make me inspired they make me want to journal at the same time but if you don't even want that and you just want like a fun read that is also ideal even if it's only like five or ten pages a day honestly reading makes all the difference and you learn so much new vocabulary that you probably wouldn't have used if you hadn't been reading if you want to create a consistent sleep schedule you need to sleep at the same time every single day to help regulate your body's natural clock and also to have good sleep make sure that you're limiting caffeine intake like halfway throughout the day this means even yerba mate is like they have so much caffeine and they will really disrupt your sleep pattern and I think a big thing with sleep is that it doesn't matter if you're getting like long sleep and it's poor quality it matters more that it's really high quality sleep and I think that there is so many podcasts on how to get good sleep so I highly recommend watching those I think the Huberman podcast or something like that scientist has really good episodes on 
the importance of sleep and it really makes you realize how much more it's needed. I also want to say that it's probably better that you limit naps because it really just throws off your sleep schedule and I know that when people are in school I feel like a lot of times they're tired, they come home, they want to nap, but it just disrupts the cycle of it and also if you get enough sleep in the first place you're probably less inclined to nap in the first place. The next topic that's going to help you glow from the inside out and also just help you throughout the entire school year is managing your stress. I think that this is something that's so important and if you actually look up what happens when you have like an excess of cortisol which is the stress hormone it damages you in so many ways like you would be surprised how many ways it can interfere with your body and it literally makes you like age quicker and maybe that's not everybody's concern but that is not something I'm trying to have and as someone that doesn't really experience anxiety often whenever I do feel it it's whenever my stress is like way too high and my life is not in balance so in order to avoid feelings of anxiety for me I need to make sure that I'm managing my stress some ways that I personally do this is by making sure that I don't have to hand things in late or that I'm overdue on things, which means managing my time correctly. And I am no saint. I'm actually pretty bad at time management and it's something that I need to work on. But for me, I make sure to wake up early in the morning because I know that that's what time works best for me. And I'll have a to-do list. I have so many notebooks. I have planners. I make sure that I'm up to date with my deadlines. I make sure to prioritize my work. Like even if I want to go see friends, I'll try to get my work done before that just so that I'm not stressed after. And also you can romanticize this by going to like chapters or Barnes and Nobles I'm not sure if that's the one in the US but like getting cute notebooks and cute pens that make you want to be more organized and plan more effectively some other things that help me manage my stress is taking breaks whenever I'm working and if you're studying for like hours on end make sure that you are prioritizing those little brain breaks and that doesn't necessarily mean phone break it just means like look up from your work Maybe go read a little bit, go eat a little something, make a snack, or just rest for a little bit. I personally love going to coffee shops, and I love going with friends even more because then when I need a break, I can just talk to my friend for a little bit. And also another way that I manage my stress, and I think is a big help for everyone, is just connecting with friends, family, or social support. I think a lot of times when we have stress, or at least for me, I kind of like go within, and I don't want to see anyone, I don't want to talk to anyone, I don't want to ask for help, but that never makes it better. I think telling people what you're struggling with and you know letting people know that you are struggling is honestly so helpful and you'd be surprised like there's probably a lot of people that actually want to help you or help load that stress off of you and even just expressing and like kind of venting it is helpful for you I would highly recommend to make an effort to have friends in every class that you go in because this way you can text them message them ask them for help relate with each other if things in the class are not going well or they are going well and Yeah, I'm sure that there's somebody in every class that you can make friends with and that you would click with. You just have to make the conscious effort to make friends. You know, you can't just sit back and wait for them to come to you. You have to put in the effort. And it's also a two-way street, so you need to make sure that you're trying to maintain them. You can also practice mindfulness and relaxation techniques. I know that a big, obviously, stress reliever for people is like meditation and yoga and deep breathing. If you haven't tried it for yourself, do not knock it until you do because I feel like sometimes it can sound so redundant, but it's redundant for a reason it obviously works and I've seen it firsthand in many of my friends and even in my own life I honestly think that the time that I was the least stressed was when I was so consistent in yoga because it would be so relaxing and I wouldn't have to think about anything and I would just say to myself Fernanda you have one hour to just not think about the things that are bothering you like literally nobody needs you in this one hour it's just time to lock in focus and be present obviously another way to manage your stress is by having a study technique that actually works for you. Now, I am no study goat, and that is why I'm not in school, but literally watch on YouTube, study tips, study hacks. There's TikToks on this. Like, there's so many resources for you to figure out a method that works for you because if you do not have a good study method and you're just kind of like throwing yourself in, it's kind of inevitable that you will have a stress attack. <laughs> like, it's just not going to go well. It might not even be that you have a lot of stress, but it's definitely not the most effective. I would say developing effective study habits, figuring out effective ways to have study sessions where you're fully just in flow and prioritizing what's in front of you. This way, you can also avoid cramming sessions because that's like just so stressful that's like stress inducing um and also just finding places where you know you can study for a long amount of time and it works for you for me this is cafes or libraries but 
you know, having a good place where you know you can be there for hours and it's kind of like your safe space to study or work, I think is the ideal solution. And if you don't have a place where you can do this, try your best to make wherever you study at home just a very organized place and one where you have limited distractions and you can just fully get into that genius mode. Also, another thing I want to say with relaxing, minimizing stress, is just to add more fun into your life. Like, if you can't take away that stress and, you know, you have a lot of things that you don't want to be doing, at least add in some hobbies, add in some laughter, add in some friends, add in some hangouts, like add in things into your life to bring it up and be happy. Even if this means studying with your friends or picking up hobbies with your friends so that you can do something with them at the same time. I was just watching a TikTok yesterday that I feel like kind of relates to this, but this girl was saying that a man asked her, what would you do if you didn't have to go to work? Like, what would you do in this world? It can be anything you want. What would you pick? And I guess the same thing could go for like, what would you do if you didn't have school right now? And she was like, actually, I love my job. Like, I, I would want to do it. I really don't mind it. The hours are good. It's not that bad. It's fun for me. And like in this scenario, you could say, I actually like school. I like learning, which I think is a little bit more valid. But anyways, he then responded to her being like, I literally asked you if you could do anything fun what would you do and you picked work like you don't have any hobbies you don't have any interest and then she kind of looked within and was like oh my god i don't do anything fun like why do i only go to work and so i feel like this is a question to ask yourself and see what your answer is so if you didn't have to go to work or you didn't have to go to school what would be that thing that you would spend your time on you could say crocheting you could say filming and editing youtube videos you could say cooking whatever it is that's the thing that brings you joy and that's fun for you so try your best to incorporate that daily because if you lose track of the things that really make you happy and you're just focusing on working and studying you're gonna burn out sooner or later and you know ideally the goal is to not burn out at all but if you know that it tends to happen to you or maybe during finals or whatever just try your best to avoid that as much as you can and having little bits of joy throughout your day moving on we're going to talk about how to improve our mood naturally because walking around with a bad mood you can feel it other people can feel it and it's in your energy it's in your vibe so we're going to work hard on improving our mood so that we can even spread that good energy to other people during the school year one thing i must say is that i'm listening to a lot of music and and you have to be very careful with what music you listen to and I've talked about this in a lot of podcasts before but make sure that you're listening to happy music because music is so powerful and it can really influence your mood so even if you love sad music like I love sad music it does make me sad to listen to so try your best to listen to music that makes you feel happy energized makes you want to get up and dance makes you want to get up and sing like listen to that music that empowers you and not even just that but podcasts that empower you I personally love again like same with the books I love listening to self-help podcasts because they really inspire and motivate me but if you're over listening to the self-care podcast listen to something that's gonna make you laugh there's literally so many podcasts that are just about pointless topics they're just for fun they're just to get your mind off of whatever you're doing in life they're just to make you laugh and it's kind of fun just to listen to like a little girl talk another way to lift up your mood is by expressing gratitude you can do this in the morning and write three things that you're grateful for or you could do this at night or if you don't want to write things down do it in your head whenever I'm going to bed I always think about three things that I'm grateful for that happened that day and three things that went great and honestly it puts me right to sleep I'm like in a happy headspace and the more that you are grateful for the more the universe is gonna bless you with things to be grateful for it's kind of like the lucky girl syndrome think about the things that make you lucky and feel like you're that lucky person this even works with visualizations like you can do visualizations that make you feel good and get you in that good mood also express gratitude more often whenever you feel it like if you're at school and you just I don't know you bump into a friend and it really lifted up your mood tell them that you're grateful that you saw them because it's just spreading good energy and obviously it's gonna make other people feel good as well another thing that improves my mood is saying positive affirmations to myself just recently I got some sticky notes and I put them all throughout my house with affirmations and they really inspire me whenever I see them and also I am CEO of saying affirmations in my head wherever I'm going to like I'll just say you look beautiful you look amazing you're confident you're strong people love to talk to you you talk to everyone like I always say it before I go out and you could ask any of my friends I probably say it to them we always say that and it really lifts up our spirit repeating positive affirmations counteract negative thoughts and they boost your confidence and mood and then again saying these really quickly but other ways that boost my mood is being with friends being with my family watching shows that make me laugh 
And of course, for me, prioritizing self-care. You know I love self-care. And also just one thing to note on that is that I talked about this in the last episode. Obviously, it was all based on basically self-care, but I feel like a lot of times people that are in school or they're busy working or whatever, they'll always say like, I don't have time to do that. But literally, you can allocate like five minutes to doing your morning skincare routine or five minutes to do some deep breathing and whatever it is, like you could make time for it and it really does improve your mood. Okay, the last one in this section is really important. Obviously, for a good mood, prioritizing rest is essential like you do not want to bring yourself out it's good to lay down but okay here's the but do not let yourself rot in bed okay because that is where things go wrong that is where things go wrong and I think that when I was in school a lot of times I'd get home I was so exhausted I would lay in bed and scroll for hours literally I do that now and it does not make me feel good and you're like rotting your brain I think it's important to remember that the way that you spend your days is the way that you spend your life and I can say this firsthand ever since I moved out I feel like I've been way more attached to my phone just because I have no one like my family keeping me accountable or telling me to get off of it and I think that it's a way to communicate with my friends and like to stay in touch but at the end of the day you are just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and that kills creativity like one thing I will say is that I think I create the least amount of content on TikTok and that is the app that I scroll on the most that in itself just kind of proves that the more that you scroll you kind of lose touch of your own even thoughts or what content you want to create yourself and also laying in bed all day complaining seeing other people's lives that you think are better than yours it's just damaging to your mental health and so you you need to get off your phone that is not gonna help you and don't waste your extra time when you're not in school doing that especially being in high school and having TikTok, I honestly would have gone insane I feel like you do not need to see all that content from people that are older than you when you're like in high school it's just not the vibe and also you're gonna be the least interesting person if the only opinions you have are the ones regurgitated from other people online okay so now that we know how to feel good from the inside out how we're gonna glow and shine on in everything that we do and throughout the whole year the last few things that I want to talk about and I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly because I feel like I've been talking for so long but it's all the things to do with your brain say we have the body in check we have the health in check we got the wellness in check we got the self-care in check the thing that will ultimately transform you is your mindset the way that you think the way that you feel and even how you portray yourself and carry yourself so so some things that I want you guys to consider when you're going into the school year or going back to school is your mindset your attitude your confidence your charm your charisma and your communication skills now if you want to learn how to be the most magnetic person in the room have ultimate social riz your communication on point just being super confident in whatever room you step in go listen to my episode on charisma I honestly think that's one of my best episodes and I have so much important information to say on it and I feel like I really touched on every single topic that goes into those categories so I don't really want to go over it now because I feel like I may be repeating some things but watch that episode it's gonna help you a lot and I feel like confidence charisma communication skills the way you carry yourself like all of that is really important to brush up on and we kind of forget about it so every so often I like to brush up on these skills some of the ways that I do this is by consuming content that talks about this so this could be books videos YouTube videos movies documentaries TikToks. watch in content from other people giving their first-hand experiences on how they improve these skills because I feel like this is a type of thing that you really need to hear how people do it firsthand rather than like studying it by the book you know like you can really get people's tips and tricks that are super authentic to them and how you can improve it yourself that being said remember that community communication skills and talking and presenting yourself all that is a skill and so going into the new school year after the summer you may feel a little bit either antisocial or maybe you've spent the whole summer with people so you're not going to feel any different but if you haven't spent the summer with people you may feel a little bit anxious going into the new year with like no skills being brushed up on so when you're going into the first day of class or going back to work or whatever it is actively try your best to talk to other people to look at people in the eyes to hold yourself up with shoulders back chin up asking people how their summer went telling people how your summer went you could even brush up on some random topics or current events or like things that are relevant before you go into school so that you have some things to talk about and again practicing the affirmation thing whenever you get to school or walking into a room saying I am beautiful I am amazing
amazing, I am intelligent, I am interesting, I'm a good conversationalist, I exude good energy, people want to talk to me, people want to be my friends, and just having that mentality because that's really going to transform you to the next level and it's going to attract people to you like a magnet. The mindset that you need to have is that you are as good as anybody else and that you are interesting and amazing in your own unique way. Things can be really damaging the minute you get into school and you start to compare yourself to other people, you start to rank people in order, put yourself under someone else or make yourself feel inferior or make yourself feel like you're not the prettiest one in the room, the smartest one in the room, the most confident one in the room. Like all those mindsets really affect how you feel about yourself and how you act. Like they could all just be fake thoughts fake negative thoughts that really affect how you act. So if we know that thoughts change our actions and our emotions, feed your brain with healthy thoughts, feed your brain with positive affirmations, fake it till you make it, and eventually not only will you believe it, but everyone around you will believe it. You'll make so many friends this way, and also if you feel like it's hard for you to make friends, again, I said this earlier, actually put in the effort because you need to try. It's not an easy skill, and even those people that you look at and you're like, God, I wish I was effortlessly as confident. I wish I was effortlessly as good at making friends as they are. Just know that not all of those people are actually doing it effortlessly. Like I feel like someone could look at me in some ways, like if we were in a room and say, oh, like that girl is like really confident. She's making so many friends or she's talking to so many people and they may feel that that comes really naturally to me. But in my head, I'm actively making the effort to appear that way, to talk to others, to remind myself who I am and my worth. And so just know that when you see other people like that, they also may be faking it. They're just better at hiding it than you are. Overall, you can do some journaling before you go into the school year on self-worth and just actively working on yourself and reflecting on yourself and figuring out your self-concept so that in your brain, you value yourself so highly and you know your self-worth. I think having self-worth is such an attractive trait and when making friends or being in a classroom or wherever you are just around other people, people can feel the energy of you knowing what you're worth and having that innate confidence inside of you. That confidence that when you're talking to someone else and you get that the vibes are off, you don't get insecure and think that you're in the wrong. You start to think, do I like them rather than do they like me? Also by this, you can look at your own personality traits before you go into the school year or before you go into class or wherever and just really pick point what traits about yourself you're so happy that you have and the traits that you really like about yourself because you can emphasize those more. And also if you truly like yourself, if you truly love yourself, Yourself. Nobody can say anything to you because you don't care about their opinion. You like who you are and if they don't like you or they don't see you for who you truly are, that's on them and they just lost a queen or a king. Since we're talking about self-worth and affirmations, if you guys didn't know, on my personal Instagram, Fernanda Ramirez with two A's in my last name, I started a broadcast channel, which is like a little group chat channel thing where I can post stuff to all my followers that join that broadcast. No one can reply to me, but I can post stuff. And so I started making a Ferns Friday newsletter. So so if you guys aren't in that already, go follow me on Instagram, join the broadcast. It's under a little highlight called broadcast. Anyways, I made two of these little newsletters and I put affirmations onto them. So I'm going to read you them just because you can write these down if you're like journaling or you have like paper and a pen in front of you right now. Write these down so you can say them to yourself before you go into the school year. The first one is courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. The second one is your perspective is unique. It is important and it counts. The third one is I'm allowed to ask for what I want and what I need. Fourth, I am allowed to feel good. And fifth, I belong here and I deserve to take up space. So it's kind of like what I was just saying, but write those down, put them on a sticky note, put them in front of you and repeat them to yourself if you ever have any self-doubt and know that you're that bitch, okay? And I know that some of my friends struggle with the feeling of feeling like having self-belief and self-confidence turning into self-obsession or thinking that you're better than others. And I feel like I talk about this all the freaking time, but that's not what it is. Honestly, having self-belief and having self-worth is one of the best things that you can have for yourself. Things will manifest for you without even trying. And that way you're gonna get treated with the respect that you deserve to have. And you also respect others like that. This way you'll exude good energy and only people with lower self-esteem or lower self-worth would make you feel bad about believing in yourself and knowing that you're that bitch. Sorry, I keep saying that, but that sentence makes me confident, okay? If I know that I am her and some other girl comes and she thinks she is her, I would never make her feel bad about that because I'm like, yes, queen, slay, okay? So surround yourself with those people that make you feel good and uplift you and cut off the negative vibes because they're gonna pull you down through the school year and we don't want that. 
We want to be surrounded by friends that make us laugh, friends that make us feel good, friends that inspire us, friends that want to hang out and talk about future goals, future plans, bucket list ideas. We want to be with those people that inspire us, not the opposite, not the gossip queens, not the queens that you leave hanging out with them and you actually end up feeling worse than you did before, and not the queens that don't ask us a single thing about ourselves, okay? So that was the last little topic on our self-worth, our mindset, our brains, and yeah, with that, I'm going to end off this episode. I hope that this helped you and that you learned or got something out of this and realized how you can step into your power this next year and feel your best from the inside out. With glow up episode number two and glow up episode number one, oh my goodness, will you be walking into that new school, that new work, that new office, that new tryout, that new whatever with brand new energy where again, people want to be around you you will manifest your life with those things. If you treat your body with respect, you treat it how you want to be, you lift your vibrations high, I really don't think that there's a bad outcome for you. So anyways, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you very soon.